moments that have happened over the last couple of days. Probably a list of things you'd like to see that you didn't, or maybe some things that you saw that you wish you hadn't. And I, I know that, uh, I'm sure being backstage and knowing what our plans were and what our intentions were to share with you, I felt like we did a great job. I felt like we communicated uh, the culture. I felt like we were starting to, to really focus uh, on leadership and you being here this morning as a part of what we're trying to do in the Americas, North America, Latin America, is really an important step for us to gather. And you'll hear more about that today, about our intentions to make sure that we're creatively collaborating. Now, we know that the great music is made when you have multiple viewpoints, when we question each other and we knock off some rough ed edges and together we put something great out there for the world to tell our story. And we have a great story to tell. And we've heard a lot about that. Uh, going into convention, I knew that there was going to be a lot of messaging, a lot to get through, and we're trying to tell it at a level for everybody in the world. You have a lot of different leaders with different perspectives and a lot of creativity. And we know that when we focus and bring that back to our markets, uh, who maybe have a few more things in common, and we can select those parts of the message and that ammunition from the product perspective uh, that we can focus in on the areas of our philosophy plan that will really help our market specifically. So we're gonna take those things and we want you to take those things and really try and start to bring it together, really dial it in with a level of focus and an intensity that we believe will help our markets continue to grow. We have great, great things. Uh, the party itself, the enthusiasm, there's nothing like being around thousands of brand new leaders who have been with us less than two years uh, who, and feel their energy. Did you guys feel that? I mean, did you, did you soak it up? I hope you did. Because for us, it's really that life force, as you know, that continues to build in our business to help them understand our culture, to bring them in as well. This still uh, is my happiness platform. Uh, this, this job becomes more and more rewarding, more and more difficult at the same time. Uh, the, the growing pains are real. Uh, for, for me to grow personally, for us to grow as a region, for you to grow your teams, we know that we go through those cycles of you know, frustration and learning and feeling like we're still trying to understand and then you start to get it and you catch something and you learn a little bit and you feel that confidence start to grow and then it's that, it's a growth cycle and we're feeling that as a company right now and I hope you all appreciate how excited we are about the cycles that we're in because we have an amazing willingness on the part of many of you, all of you, to learn and to really take that approach whether we're doing one of two things. We're winning or we're learning. We're not, there's no fail in this. There's no fail in your business. There's no fail in our business. Together, we're doing one of those two things. So I hope you keep that in mind as we continue to innovate, we continue to focus on bringing forward the culture, the things about our business that we love, we're gonna bring forward, we're gonna to continue to find those. And some of those, I've heard from many of you, some of those I know you feel like maybe we've left part of it behind that we should have brought forward. And there's things about what we had that we miss, or that we love, or that we need to relearn. We're in that with you, and we know that we wanna to continue to find those things. Uh, we don't wanna relearn things uh, or leave things behind that we know are an important part of what we do together with New Skin. Uh, we also wanna make sure we stop doing the things that really aren't working, that really aren't growing our business, that we can leave behind and feel good about, uh, but some of those things are hard. Separation anxiety is real. Uh, the detachment that we feel from those things that we're comfortable with are, are real things hard for us. 
as people, as humans. But we know for our betterment and for the limited resources that we all have emotionally, psychologically, financially, our time, we talk about that time freedom. I know many of you fill up that time and all of that time is precious. And we don't have enough to keep doing things that are not effective or that are not helping our business grow. So some of those we're gonna leave behind and we're gonna feel sad about it. We're gonna go through all the stages of grief. We're gonna mourn those things. Then we're gonna get past it and we're gonna move forward. And I know we can do that together. We are at a great time. We are one of those moments where we have a choice and we can move forward and we can really accelerate uh, or we can continue to look behind us. Uh, I'm looking forward. I hope what you've heard the last couple of days, the energy that you're feeling from all the new people joining our business, they're all looking forward. They're building their future. And each of you are a critical part of helping us do that. Uh, it makes me happy to be with these incredible, incredible leaders here this morning. And I know who's right to work. Uh, my team was at work before Hans Zimmer played his last note last night, uh, really trying to implement and incorporate the things that we've learned, the plans that we have to move forward. So it really, as bad of an idea as it is to have a meeting on 7.30 in the morning, the night after a week of convention, uh, I really appreciate each of you spending your time a few minutes with us this morning. We've had an incredible amount of discussion about our mission. I know you guys have heard that. Uh, there's nothing more important or nothing that's a brighter North Star for us than this mission of empowering people. And that means creating leaders. That means people who can have an influence on others. People who can share what they have and translate that into action in others that will then do the same thing. That is the most important thing and it will drive when we when we listen as we build out our product pipeline as we build out our compensation plan as we build out all these elements of our business and continue to bring forward those we know that those touchstones of empowering people and improving those lives are the most important things that we do and really that starts right here in this room this morning and we know that you are doing that with your teams you're, you're doing that and you've done that consistently over a long period of time to be where you're at right here. That consistency is what has spread the success that you have. We know that as we consistently live up to this mission and, and use it in everything we do, that we'll be better. You've heard a lot about the platform. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but I want you to know we're committed to this and we're building it. It doesn't exist. It will be different in the future. It was different before, but today we have an amazing set of tools and pillars of our business that will help bring us forward. That are things that you and your teams can go and do today in terms of sharing the business, sharing the product, creating leaders. We have that. So, we don't want to talk about what we don't have today. What we want to do is continue to focus on the amazing blessing that we have in so many areas of our busy business today that are bringing new people in, that are getting people excited about our products, that are helping people look and feel better today. And we're going to take all of that and we're going to continue to build for the future. We're building this platform together and it's going to take all of us to be able to really fulfill this vision that we have of the leading opportunity platform. We have big goals, big goals. These are not things that we take lightly. I know, I've been with the company 15 years. I know how many times you've each heard this goal for the US to become a billion dollar business. Yeah, you're all, you're all you have the same feeling I do. It really starts to sound like, what will be different this time? Why will this be different? And I can tell you, just because we haven't gotten the result that we want, doesn't mean we're gonna change our focus or change our goal or give up on this dream. We, we talk about it all the time. You talk about it. 
with your teams. Never give up. Never change your focus. If it's the right focus, we will achieve it. I believe in this more than I've ever believed in anything about our business. I believe we have the right goal. The opportunity in the United States and the Americas today is bigger and we're more positioned than we've ever been. That's why it's gonna be different because we're better today than we were yesterday. We're better than we were a year ago. We have a better story to tell. We need to tell it and we need to do it together. And I believe collectively, that's why it's gonna be different now. You'll hear about some of those pillars in our nine o'clock meeting. Our teams will share with you those areas that we believe we're gonna push forward. Those things that we're gonna bring forward and the focus that we're going to bring to the conversation. <clears throat> we're hoping to cons consolidate the story a little bit so that we can share the brightest parts of our business with clarity and that you can take those, those elements, put them together with your story in a way that will be compelling to many others like it has been. But it's gonna be faster, it's gonna be incredibly helpful for all of us as we follow some principles that will help us come together. Some of those principles that we're focused on, I wanna share with you, and I'm not gonna share all of these with everybody at nine o'clock, but I want you to know that as a management team, these are very, very important for my team across the West in all of our markets to really focus. The engine, the economic engine of our business is you. It is leadership. It is what you do every day to bring people into our business, to get them excited about a business opportunity to be able to be a part of New Skin. That's the engine. We're not losing sight of that. We gotta to continue to focus on that. There are some refinements that we can make that will continue to help optimize. We're committed to velocity. It's an incredible plan with incredible benefits. And it's shown some great, great results. Because we're a public company and because we have some proprietary things about our plan, we're not always publicizing the positive things or even the things that we're worried about. We're worried about the same things you're worried about. We see those. And I want you to know that we have that data, we're looking at that, and we're finding what are those ways that we can optimize our plan so that we take out the friction, we take out anything that slows you down, we take out the things that are not adding, and again, we're bringing it forward and we're building on that plan. Uh, but we're committed to making sure that engine continues to drive our business. We know that when we focus, when we have a singular focus, our plan develops results. We have in the past had a Ruby focus. You guys maybe remember the BDMS, build, duplicate, multiply. Everyone focused on that specific part of our plan. Doesn't mean there weren't things happening earlier in the plan with creating executives, signing people up, LOIs, the other part of the plan, diamonds and blue diamonds and team elite creation. All of those things were happening, right? But when we focused collectively and said, look, this area is something that we can all drive towards because we know that's a real sweet spot in the plan, then we know that that creates a lot of growth through that focus, that power of alignment as leaders around that singular part. Many of us have talked about the velocity plan being very flexible and there's new parts of our plan that some people focus on and some of our new leaders focus on they may not have it exactly right in that area of focus we're counting on you to help us identify that part where collectively when we align and focus on that part of the plan that those other parts of the plan will continue to feed more people into the plan will continue to yeah, attract those entrepreneurs into our business and really bring that along into the area of leadership that we really, if we all focus on, will be powerful. We still have a customer focus. You have to know that around the world, everything we do has to be about selling product to a customer. They're, the most important thing that we can do and share 
is the importance of that because we know that when we have the right number of customers per leader, that leaders are supported and leaders grow. And leaders have the time to be able to go out and work with their leadership teams <coughs> because that customer volume is there supporting their business. We're gonna to continue to focus on that. We know we've lost a little bit of focus on ADRs. We've lost a little bit of focus on that kind of volume that's supporting our business. <coughs> and we think that's a powerful part of the engine and of leadership support and fundamentally leadership creation, which if we look at our priorities and the mission is that area of focus. And there's an area of the compensation plan that will be our area of focus that will continue to drive supporting customers all the way to building team elites and long-term enormous businesses for those who have that desire and that effort and want to continue to build. Power of Weidman again, leaders together. When we tell a common story through our own eyes, it becomes very powerful. We do not want to take away anybody's individuality. We don't want anyone to lose the personality that they share. You heard from many different personalities over the last few days, and everybody sees through their lens, and they can add a lot of value, and we can all appreciate that. But we know that when we collectively are telling the new skin story, it becomes powerful. And that powerful generation of our story collectively will build, and it will build our brand, it will build our reputation, it will build everything that we're working towards together. Uh, it'll build our culture. We'll become stronger together. Uh, if there's not a secret why Newskin's been here for 35 years. And when you listen to Blake and Steve and Sandy for 15 minutes, that, that culture and that collective together is very, very powerful. And when we can put people into that, and then you can help be the glue that keeps them as a part of that, we still have a new skin story. And I think that's the story that we need to tell together. I think the last two years, when I look back, about the amazing growth that we've seen in many of your organizations, the exciting things, uh, the scary things, the changes, uh, one of the things that I really appreciate is the fact that as you've told your story, uh, it's been unique. One of the things that I think we've created is a little bit of too many different stories without anyone feeling like we know what the new skin story is collectively. Does that resonate with you a little bit? Okay, so we're continuing to look at how we come together with that new skin story. It has to be in balance. Again, that's customer focus, that's leadership focus. We're doing a lot of things at the same time to get great results. Uh, we need to be better at all of them, but we know that as we maintain a focus on customer acquisition and leadership creation, there's that balance. Balance in our business, balance in our lives, balance in how we spend our time. We know that if you do all of one thing, that we get a little lopsided. If all we did was work out one arm, I'd have, you know, my bicep would look like mine and Ryan's would look like his and we'd all be a little bit lopsided. We, don't, we want to be the same on both sides. And so that balance I think is really important. Um, and I'm trying to learn how to work out like Ryan, by the way, so. The power of differentiation. We know that when we have you are a difference. You are unique. You are special. You are valuable. And what you bring in you is a part of that new skin story those things together are gonna to help us accelerate and explode this business. It means our products are different. It means we continue to focus on unique, differentiated, scientific story products. We have a lot of different ways that we can share and sell products. If we decide what we wanna do is share and sell a lot of products that look like a lot of other products that compete with a lot of other prices, we're gonna not focus on our mission. We're not gonna achieve the results that we think we can. We have a great portfolio. We have a great pipeline that's coming. We know you're excited about that. We need to focus on differentiated products because that's part of our new skin story. You guys know that story. You've told that story. You've made a lot of money with that story. We're gonna to continue to make sure those products are our focus. 
We have products at every price point that have that differentiation. Everything from AP24 to LifePack and the scanner and LifePack Nano, all the way to our beauty device platform and things that are at the higher end. Each of those has a critical element, which is a differentiated, powerful story. So we wanna make sure we're focused on those. Uh, we're not gonna get into the Me Too game. We're not gonna get into the quick, flashy, every other two weeks or three weeks, some new product. Because we know that doesn't give us time to share our story. We have to have a product on a regular cadence with a plan and a process where we can build excitement about that product that's coming, where we can bring it to you far enough in advance so that you know how to motivate and align your teams so that you have the information and the education about that product well in advance. You're, you should not be surprised by anything we do. If, if we change one thing in my team in terms of communication and what we do, it's that you won't be surprised by anything that you hear that we announce. You need to understand and know where we're going. And hopefully you're a part of that collective co-creation of those plans. Again, we know that that creativity, that genius in all of you can be unleashed when we talk, when we question each other, and when we build that plan together. When we build the plan, we're gonna stick to it. We're gonna have it and it's gonna be predictable. It's gonna be understandable. It's gonna be not agreed by everybody but we are gonna have the ability to align around it and you will know in advance what's happening, what's coming, what will help your business. Some of it you may have to tell your teams, this isn't gonna help our team. We're not gonna go there. We won't focus on that, but you know it's coming. So that each of you can take those elements of your story with the new skin story and put it together in a way that will effectively move our business forward. Each of these elements are, are part of our management team's discussion every day. Are we focused on differentiated product? Are we focused on telling our story in an aligned way? Are we communicating the way we need to so that we can leverage the power of the economic engine that we have? It's a powerful thing. You have each seen it in motion, sometimes at different times. Some of you are feeling that power now, some of you are not. And what I believe is that the secret for us to hit our goals across every market, Latin America to a billion, the US to a billion, EMEA to 500 million, those goals will be achieved when more than half of you, seven, let's say 70%, are feeling that power at the same time. We get that going, we know that we will achieve those goals. Uh, if we have individual needs, that trump the power of these principles, where as a company we're trying to support eight different ways to build our business, we know, I know for a fact, that I'm probably gonna do it fairly poorly eight different times. If we can align around the one or two areas and ways that we can agree, we can build this business and tell the new skin story how we focus and what, what the process is for rolling out those products, aligning together around the plans, getting excited and educating together around the power of our economic engine and our, and our velocity compensation plan, we will be rolling. I, it may not even take 50%, to be honest, but it can't be 10% in the next three, you know, three months, a different 10% nine months from now, 25% a year from now. If we're doing that, we know that we're gonna miss our goal. Uh, you're so powerful when you're together, when we work together, and we know that these are important principles. Talked a little bit about this, the time is now. Everything around us, the way people work, the way people look for product, the, the value that you bring as individuals to the product and the sharing economy that we're in is for us. We've been building for this moment, guys, for 35 years. This is why it's gonna be different now. The, the environment around us has changed. It is actually changing for our benefit. It's making our business, our way of sharing product, our way of selling product, everything about delivering product better, easier, faster. 
and more relevant. Do you guys understand the convergence that's happening right now in terms of our business? It's making us more relevant. It's making what you have offered and what you each are individually experts at doing even more powerful when you go out there. If we tell our story the right way. When we do that, when we communicate and tell our story the right way, and we execute on getting these products in the hands of customers and getting our opportunity in the hands of entrepreneurs, we know that we'll be very powerful and we'll grow very quickly. We've focused on technology a lot over the past couple of years. We've made multi tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of investments to get through the cloud migration that happened on August 17th. We're a very few weeks past that and we're already seeing the results that are helping us. This is part of that environment that's changing. Our technology environment is changing around us. We have capabilities today that we didn't have two months ago. We have a lot of capabilities today that we can deploy. We need to do it together. If we have one, one direction that says, this is the kind of app I need and this is the kind of support we need, and another direction that says something different, we're gonna spend a lot of time building a lot of different ways for a lot of different people to do different things in our business. That's gonna get away from these power principles of alignment, focus, together building that platform. We're focused on leveraging this technology in new ways. We have, for the first time in the history of the company, online returns, which started, Jaron, yesterday? Today. today. So today, we have lit up online returns. We've never had that before. We had started in August, for the first time ever, we have ADR online management. You can go online and manage your ADRs, multiple ADRs, without having to be on the phone. First time ever. We have order tracking now in the US where you can actually follow your package. What a novel idea. Isn't that incredible? These are technologies that we're, that we're gonna be deploying in rapid fashion to help you, your business, be better from an execution perspective. We want a customer experience that's second to none. We want people to not be slowed down by having to do something strange when they buy a product from Newskin or something different that they're not used to. That slows people down. We know it slows you down. So that experience is an area of focus for us. What was the third one, Jaron? We're still on my site. Oh, my site. So now we have, again, in building one thing or the other, we've had the opportunity for people to send a link for a retail purchase over the last year, now you can send a link for a wholesale purchase. So you have the option, up to you. That will go live today as well. My site, my site. So these things are changing rapidly. It's gonna take us communicating. Uh, this is new, this is a lot of information. These are a lot of new paths to our business, but when we connect them together and we roll them out collectively, you're gonna have options that you've never had before, which also means it's possible to go down a lot of different paths again. So again, we need to bring this together and make sure that we understand what the duplication looks like collectively so that we can focus on using these tools in a way that help build our business. We look at both things up very frequently in our business. We look at effectiveness, what's working, and we look at efficiency. How much can we become better from a resource allocation perspective. We know that in our business as well, by market, it's different. Some markets are very, very expensive to maintain. I uh, had a conversation with Calais and Lena the other day about translations in 27 different countries in EMEA. Very expensive, really important for people that don't speak English to have information about their product and about the business in their language. Uh, that's not as efficient as it is if we did everything in English and said just figure out English or don't be a part of our business. We're balancing again efficiency with effectiveness. Same thing in each market. Some markets are running and love a certain kit configuration or a certain product. Other markets need something different. We're considerably aligned across the West markets. 
for the most part. But we also know that Latin America, even some countries in Latin America need different benefits, different products, different approaches to support than EMEA, than the US, than Canada. So we're gonna to continue to make sure you know that we're, we're balancing effectiveness and we'll start there. Then we'll go for efficiency. At the global level, they have the same discussion, but I want you to know that we're fighting really hard to make sure we're doing what's right for our markets, not what's right for Southeast Asia or Japan or someplace else. We're doing what's right for you in Colombia. We're doing what's right for you in Spain or Germany or Norway or Sweden. We're gonna do that across every market. We'll still have to balance some things to be efficient, which means we have to make some choices. We have to choose where we put our resources, and that, again, is gonna take a conversation, more communication with each of you. Greg has a couple of things he wants to share. Greg is our Vice President of Marketing for the West. 